Bridget Pastor. Let me say first of all, thank you to Brother Radish for the work that he's done in organizing this thing. Yes. Brother Jerry Lane's done a lot of leg work and put a lot into this. Appreciate him. Uh, thank all of you for being here. Well, I believe we could go home now and say we've heard from God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Call me what you want. Say what you will. I have to stand with this King James Bible and say, Thus saith the Lord. Amen. In Ezekiel chapter 2, God told Ezekiel, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord. Amen, bro. And whether they will hear, or yeah, whether forbear. they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. Amen. Amen, whether they hear what we're telling them this morning, or whether they forbear, they're going to know in the day of judgment, there was a prophet among them. There was a man of God that stood with the word of God and said, this is what the Bible says. This is where God draws the line, and this is the way to be saved. There's still a few in this country that have not bowed the knee to Baal. Amen, bro. We cannot, we must not, we will not Amen. stand idly by and let them uproot the old landmarks. Amen, brother. Yeah, set. they're moving them. Just ignore the problem. If you came to hear some soft preaching and, and some hand ringing today, you came to the wrong meeting. I think yeah. that meeting's down the road somewhere. Yeah. Amen. But if you came here today to hear a message from God, you're in the right place. Yeah. Because we're here to warn this rebellious and stiff necked generation Amen. that they need to flee from the wrath to come. Amen. Amen. The message I believe that God's laid on my heart yeah. this morning is a message of warning of God's impending judgment. Let me say this. Get this down. I believe the single greatest threat to the freedom of this country, the single greatest threat to religious liberty, the single greatest threat to our families and to the institution of marriage is the sodomite movement. You better believe it. I believe that. You understand what a sodomite is this morning? Yeah. If you've got an NIV, uh, you probably don't understand what a sodomite is. <laughs> Hello, brother. Come on. This King James Bible declares that a sodomite is a man that lies with another man. And that's wicked. It's abomination before God. The title of this message this morning, I'm called Sin. Right. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 2, which is God's commentary on chapter 1. The solution to Adam's situation was not found in a man or in a group of men. It was found in a woman. Yeah. Amen. One man and one woman in the God-ordained institution of marriage is the only relationship you will find in the Word of God. Right. Amen. God condemns the same-sex relationship. You better believe, yes, sir. already quoted for us Leviticus 18:22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with, with womankind. Woman. It is abomination. Amen. God hates it. It makes God sick. Yes, sir. That's what that means. The Bible tells us that when revival came to the nation of Israel, the idols were torn Grow down. Out to sodomites. And the sodomites were taken out of land. Yeah. Check 1 Kings chapter 15 sometime. Yeah. King Asa got right with God, tore the idols down, and Took ran Took them the out of the country, off. brother. They still need to remove them. The evolutionists and the humanists would have the Lord. Yeah. Rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew up on the ground. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and every inhabitant because of the wickedness and the depravity of the people who lived there. They have us to believe that man is rising ever onward and upward and they tell us that we're only beginning to reach our full potential as we are more enlightened and as we shed these old uh, stuffy, starchy, biblical standards that our forefathers have set up. But the truth of the Word of God is attested to by the evidence of history that when a man rejects God and when a society rejects God, that the man and the society are put on an ever downward spiral yes, into sir. oblivion. Amen. I could give you numerous examples of that today. We could talk about the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans, various tribes that are found out in the jungle yeah. even today, great societies that formerly existed. 
that are in oblivion today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Their only remaining ancestors are pagans. They live in the jungles. Yeah. That's what their legacy is today. Yeah. Over in Genesis chapter 6, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil, evil continually. Amen. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. God created this thing and he can destroy it. It's his. What paper do you work for? God destroyed the original creation because of the wickedness of man's heart. Every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth except for Noah and his family, was destroyed by God. That's right. And went to hell. There's a hell today. Genesis 19, the angels told Lot, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. In 24 of that chapter 19 of Genesis, then the Lord, who? The Lord. One. Verse 7, the Lord God formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Yes, Verse 18 says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Yes. Verse 20 says, and Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. God looked at Adam and saw that Adam was alone. The solution to Adam's situation was not found in a group of women. Amen. This on this message. Back to the Bible or back to the jungle. <laughs> yeah. That's Amen. our two choices this morning. For the sake of time, I'm not going to have you turn to every reference. I'm going to give you the reference. You can jot those down. In the very first verse of the Word of God, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 26 of that chapter, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after like our likeness. likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in His Amen. own image. Right, right. In the image of God created He him. Male and female, and female Amen. created He them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, oh, Be fruitful, and multiply, right. and replenish the earth, and subdue it. I believe it's very, very ironic that this battle is being fought here in Dayton, Tennessee. Another historic battle was fought here, right in this courthouse, the battle of evolution. And I believe that it's, it's the loss that we've faced against the battle of evolution in the last 50 years that has brought out and opened the floodgates to a lot of other enemies of the Word of God and the people of God, of which the Sodomite movement is. Amen. When you reject the truth of God, that God is your creator, God is your sustainer, and He alone is the sovereign lawgiver to mankind, you cut loose the moorings of society and you set adrift on the sea. Amen. I appreciate that message, brother. Amen. That's, we need that. Amen. Why are we out here today? I want to I want to take one of your thoughts there for just a minute. The attitude of so many uh, professing Christians and churches today is just let's just let well enough alone. Yeah, that's it. Let's just uh, ignore this problem. Maybe it'll go away. Maybe. I'm here to tell you this morning, it's not going to go away. Right, brother. You can't just ignore this and and it, expect it to go away. And no doubt, we're going to be accused this morning of being bigots. We're going to be called no doubt fundamentalists. Yeah, uh, we're, be yeah we're fundamentalists, all right. We're going to be called fanatics, Bible thumpers, narrow-minded, oh, Bible thumpers. I say praise the Lord.